curtain. And that, that's the wallpaper. It, it can't be the wall, it's too close. Yeah, it, yeah it's um, birds, tropical birds. Yeah, lovely. In fact, makes uh, you feel bird like of paradise from Indonesia. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So how are things? They were not going well last time. Um, okay, not going well. No, no, no they won't know that they're not going well. No. Um, you know, they're limping along. Um, I can only do so much. Um, it's either you know that they're gonna have to you know, sink or swim. That's really all the, the choice is. Um, so you know, not a lot I can do. What, what's why I can't even, even if I wanted to get back to Indonesia, that wouldn't really make any difference one way or another. But you, uh, it's uh, very difficult to get back um, at the moment. So um, I'm sort of stuck here in Amsterdam until I can get a, a flight into a quarantine-free Indonesia. Um, well, it won't be quarantine-free, but, but a lot easier to get into. Um, but the problem is my visa is going to run out fairly ah. soon. And I'm really not sure what to go, how to approach this. I guess I'll just have to um, go down to immigration. I, I was thinking about hopping across to the UK to extend my visa. And, um, but the thing is, they've, they've got a, a, an EU rule that if you can only stay for three months at a, what is it? For three months at a time, not more than I don't know, some funny rule that sort of means that I've got to be away for three months before I come back. Anyway. You've got to be away for three nights. I'll, I'll three months. Out. Yeah, yeah well, I remember we just trying to figure out. Hmm. We had people from New Zealand, and I think they were allowed to stay for three months and then they had to go out for three months and then they had to come back. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. The problem is I've got nowhere else out to at the moment. So it's a bit getting into the UK isn't easy at the moment either. Um, I think if you're vaccinated, it's not a problem. I, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't actually checked. Uh, maybe I should check. Uh, yeah, well, I haven't. Elfie. Hello, Elfie. Hello, hello. Oh, good to see you guys. Morning. Morning, how are you? You're looking very fresh and well. Have you? Oh, oh gosh. <laughs> well, I put it on, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> oh. No, I just think it's your natural way. Mm, my natural way, yeah. yeah. Hey, continue your conversation. So is this contrary? contrary well, the conversation was about uh, visas. Oh. Oh. <laughs> and. And your difficulty in um, getting one. <laughs> so how long has your visa last for from um, in, in well, Amsterdam? I think it's three months, but I couldn't really, there's only one stamp. I don't know what they do here, really. I think I've looked it up on the web and it sort, sort of seems as though I'm supposed to get three months. Um, right. When did you arrive? I've got a, and I can't come back for three months. Sorry? When did you arrive? 
you haven't been here three months, have you? Uh, we're getting on to you know, t more than two months ago. Not you know, just on two months. Yeah, it's so uh, yeah, I've got to start figuring that out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. So I, I, I was thinking of just making um, uh, just a uh, hop over to the UK. But I don't think that's really going to help me much um, in terms of the visa. I might try and negotiate here with immigration, just see what they want to do, because I can't go back to Indonesia at the moment, or well, not safely. Um, so, yeah. Or, or maybe I should apply for political asylum. I've got contacts in the EU. Oh, good luck. Join the queue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. It, but yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I'm only just starting to about that and what I'm going to. Well, you know, you would think, but uh, nation states these days, you know, the, you know, they don't really care. They just doing it by the book. Well, I guess the countries I've been involved with have been, but they don't really care that your visa's run out because because of what whatever circumstance. Um, but, um, and, and my boat's going to be in the same position because it's actually an immigrant in Indonesia and been there for nearly, it's only had a, the boat actually gets a visa from Indonesia for three years and that's about to run out. And there's no way that the boat can actually leave Indonesia to go to other because all the other ports are closed. And so the, the problem is there that, well, I don't think you really need to know all these problems. Um, perhaps we better talk about something else. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's intriguing. Um, and what about the um, hacking of your business? Is that is that resolved or still ongoing? Oh no, it's 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 uh, it's uh, yeah severely damaged. They're, they're limping along in an accountancy and uh, the audit sections. Um, I mean, they, they can sort of limp along for a while, I guess. The, the legal section is well, they've got nothing to do anyway because there's no new investors coming into the country in any case. So you know, they just do maintenance, I guess. Um, no immigration, of course, so we're not processing any visas. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I mean the, the damage to the, um, the, the data system really, you know, well, you know, we, we may yet, yet get it back in parts, but um, it's really up to them to do it, because I, I, I would have to be there to do anything to help the time. And even then, I, I doubt I'd be that helpful in this whole situation. So anyway, yeah, I guess I've just got to um, try and figure up the um, immigration here to see what they want to do, whether they want to sort of put me on a plane somewhere else to find a third country. <laughs> Maybe New Zealand will take me. Maybe, the, no, they won't. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. things about them. <laughs> well, there must be millions of people in this situation who've got stuff. Mm. Yeah, well, you know, there are quite a few in Indonesia, certainly. Um, but, you know, the, the flows of refugees have completely slowed down. You're not getting the, the droves that used to come through. And so all you're left with are sort of these, um, well, so-called expats, um, sort of living, I guess, semi-retired in Indonesia. You know, some of them are on boats, but, but you know, it's a number who just live in Indonesia. But yeah, they're, they're pretty much stranded. Uh, and even the yachts in, in Southeast Asia, they can't, 
they have no way back into Australia and sort of then run the gauntlet of the Australian uh, quarantine, which is uh, in, not uh, typical. It's, uh, yeah, it's a, a major, major hassle uh, getting a yacht back into Australia, for example. And so a lot of Australian yachts are stuck in Indonesia uh, because of that. And just and, and the boats can only stay there for so long. You know, and um, if they don't, then they get taxed, and the tax is seventy-five percent of the value of the boat. So it's a, it's a, it's a, an almost an impoundment. Mm. And of course, a lot of bureaucrats are looking forward to this. Mm. Anyway, um, enough of my problems. Oh, I could go on and on. <laughs> And, and, and is it, can you not play that, you know, businessman card that you say, okay, you know, you've traveled a lot anyway, you're a businessman, you, and, um, you know, of some standing, and uh, um, that it's just a, a, a coronavirus issue rather than anything else to do with, with uh, Indonesian authorities and stuff. I wonder if that is, is one possible way of uh, a longer visa because it's a lot of rapid. And you can mm -hmm. say it's just not yeah, safe I'll, to I'll go just... back or you, you know, because of the virus. Mm. Well, it's actually not just because of the virus, but that the, the situation there at the moment is, is, is you know, very, very bad. You know, yeah, that's I why get, I say, yeah. I get first-hand reports constantly, you know, just well, not just from, from the company and family, but you know, from, you know, obviously my whole network. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, the, the situation is very bad, very bad indeed. But well, so like yeah, people it's are not dying. Um, sort of, right, Oh yeah, they're, they're dying. I mean, yeah, definitely. That there's just no facilities here. The, the, the health system or the medical system here is simply appalling. I mean, it is there is a, a sense of organisation in it, uh, but the actual um, you know, equipment, the, the facilities, and most importantly, the, the knowledge just isn't there. Uh, the, I, I used to tutor. Um, um, Indonesian medical students when I was at the uh, University of Magigada in, in Georgia as studying. And, you know, you know, these were third year medical students who you'd expect to sort of, you know, know a little bit about human physiology, anatomy and things like that. And, you know, and, and my job was just basically helping them, helping to read, help, helping them to read scientific Journal, journal articles, you know, which were ob you know, obviously very high level English. And you've got Indonesian medical students struggling to sort of read all this stuff. And, you know, the, it was just awful. You know? And uh, you, you could sort of see just why the, the system was so bad. They just didn't understand anything. They weren't understanding anything at all. And, and, and those things which were written in Indonesian were equally appalling. And, 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 most and in a lot of cases just plain wrong and dangerous and I'm not much to talk about at the end of a whole lot of other yeah, it's, it's tragic it's tragic but uh, but yeah so that, that that's the hospital that the, the medical system in Indonesia is, is not um, fully functioning um, it's you know it's a lot better than some countries but uh, it's still very poor very poor indeed it's not the sort of place you want to get sick in. Which is why I live next to, to Singapore. But unfortunately, uh, it might, it might as well be a, a 50 foot wall uh, between me and even though it's sort of you know, a stone's throw away. <laughs> mm. Yeah. I, th I just think for a bureaucrat, uh, that whole virus situation, I, you know, they got that. 
if if one says, oh, there's, you know, I need political as asylum because the authorities are after me, then immediately I would get, you know, well, what do I know about that? You might be a criminal for all I know, you know. So that's, well, that's the, just the, the authorities are after everyone. This is the problem. I'm not special. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you, in a way, you don't want to be special. You just want to say it's not a good idea for mm -hmm. me to go back there because of the medical situation. So is it? I don't know. What do I know about that? Yeah. Well, okay. Hmm. Oh, I wish you luck. Yeah. If you need to come yeah. over to. Well, the actually, I sometimes. You can always drop in. Yes. <laughs> I sometimes wonder, you know, what you would make of the Indonesian medical system, uh, you know, if you could sort of see it in action and the look on your face. I just sort of wonder sometimes, you know, what would Elke look like if she saw this? What would her face look like? <laughs> yeah, but that's There's my usual face when I look at happens, any medical right? system. <laughs> yeah, but I think even more, <laughs> even more so. Even more. <laughs> oh. Have you at least got had? The, the, do you have any access to the vaccines where you are? Have you been jabbed? Oh, well, yeah. Well, I've had the Chinese vaccine. You know, the the better than nothing vaccine, mm -hmm. uh, which is probably you know whose effect effectiveness is is you know not not great. But better than nothing. Uh, so I'm, I'm actually tr trying to get the AstraZeneca um, here in in the um, Netherlands, but I'm having rather a lot of tr problems just getting to meet doctors. Although I did succeed a few days ago on another matter. Um, so, but yeah, the typical sort of doctor's appointment sort of go there with three things. They they do the the first one, then you forget the rest, that, that sort of situation. So I've got to go back there and sort of go, well, there were other things on my list, uh, including these vaccines, yeah. both the flu and the um, um, AstraZeneca. So I want to sort of see if I can get topped up with that, that before get, getting back to Indonesia. Better. So, so what's happening in, in your world? Um, I'm in my world. Uh, um, I got really uh, tired with um, uh, first. I got in. Uh, mm, one of my best friends died in hospice, and I spent time with her and her family and and then she died and then spent time to to do the funeral and it was amazing and fabulous um and then um and then i uh, and then i would dive back into work which is at the moment in the people are going very ill again with everything. Um, so there's a huge wave coming. There's not no no summer let up, which sometimes comes no summer let up. And so um, I'm not great energy wise. I'm really I I really tired. I want it all to go away at the moment. That's my situation. Yeah, the, the ba balance isn't right. I've, and I'm glad that I've given what I've given, but it, uh, the balance isn't right at the moment. It doesn't feel like I've got enough time to, to fill the barrel back up. So I'm not quite sure how we'll do that yet. Yeah, yeah the texts are coming in. Are people, are people sort of getting sick because they do you think or, or is, are any sicknesses being sort of exacerbated by 
by stress? Um, yeah, I think a lot of, you know, by the nature of it, I look after people who feel themselves vulnerable, I think. And vulnerable people at the moment are highly alarmed, I think, about what's happening in, in the UK with all this opening up. And it's possible that that is starting it all off. So it's just a huge... The people are <clears throat> vulnerable people are at the moment very perturbed and feel extra vulnerable. Seems it's, it's often something in in the air like that when when I experience a, a wave of of need that that there's something going on in the whole society which uh, makes anxiety levels or sensations of vulnerability come up, I guess. Mm. Um, mm. Uh, last time, last time we spoke, you were, I think you were with your, in your friend's house. So oh yes, I was there, uh, wasn't I? Yeah. yeah. And you were trying to organize the funeral, I think. Was there. Yeah, that must be a very difficult time. Happened. I mean, then we were saying this is completely bonkers, you know, because we took her coffin up this cliff, basically, <laughs> overlooking the the North Devon coast, and it it looked completely amazing, you know, bonkers indeed, because it's about, you know, even when you just walk, it's like a forty minute walk steadily uphill. Um, to this vantage point and um, it, it wasn't quite sure how many people would come and how many you know we were getting on a bit and this is a heavy coffin and <laughs> how many able-bodied people were going to <laughs> attend <laughs> but hey it all happened she was there it was amazing there we were you know in overlooking the misty seas. It was so incredible. It was really amazing. And she was with us up there and then we and then we slept her home again. And <laughs> uh, I think the the um, the funeral director was was very alarmed throughout the whole thing but got some pretty good footage out of it because they call themselves alternatives, so that was pretty spectacular. Uh, the cardboard the coffin wasn't quite up to it. <laughs> it lost it, a few of its handles, so, but that was a good thing because the, then, then some, some just amazing guys had her on, you know, on the shoulder and that worked actually worked better. Um, and um, well, it, it happened. It seems still as incredible as it was beforehand. But it really happened and we got the photos. And it's, um, it's amazing. I've never been to anything like that before. Was that, was that her request? Then? That was her, her favorite spot and it was her husband Pete's request. That right. They should have a final walk up there. <laughs> it was absolutely wow, incredible, charming, um, very meaningful, very well, very romantic, very and one of these things of life and death, where it, where it kind of is so in front of you, but. Um, Actually, after all this and the crematorium and um, uh, and the wake party, uh, it, I noticed that it did nothing to have her dead, you know, for that. It did nothing for that. Because after all this and say, oh, that was a lovely time with Sam, and now I just want to have a cup of tea with her, you know, and reminisce that day. Wasn't that an amazing day? <laughs> so it's, it's, it's a... And, and if if you want to have her alive, do something like this, you know, because it just 
spent more really uh, very alive time with her, very vibrant. So this is a, a total conundrum. Okay. Glad for the experience. I just miss her dreadfully. That's one of her, one of her, I've not even plugged in. That's one of her textile ah. designs. Was that? Oh, print? That's a print on tech, on linen, yeah. And screen print kind of thing. Yes. I wear this, I just don't plug into it. I thought the fan was a bit weird. But now you've gone completely. Is that better? No. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, how about you, Rupert? Uh, well, um. Well, it, 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 it's been quite a lot actually going on. Um, I built a greenhouse, which is the my 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 main achievement recently. But we had a bit of a disappointment. It was my daughter's due date on Wednesday. Oh my and gosh. the day before, the guy who was supposed to be buying their house and the house was completion was next week, but it was pulled out. So she was in floods of tears and uh, mm. it was not the best time. And of course, we can't go and see her because she hasn't had her jab because she mm. had good. We didn't want to have the jab, so we're sort of stuck. But um, hopefully, I mean, the people that they're buying from have said they've got two weeks. I'll give them two weeks to try and find another buyer. So, so hope. Otherwise, but Danny, her partner, has been very good. He's very strong and uh, realistic. And, but obviously, she's geared up to move and the baby and everything like that. So that was a bit, a bit, a bit tricky, but uh, she's over it now. And uh, I think she's, uh, so we're still waiting for uh, our first Isn't grandchild. Oh my be, God. Yeah. That's exciting. Uh, but it's a bit frustrating just because we're mm. so far, well, we're not very far away, but we just uh, we can't go and see her. Yeah. So we just have to zoom in and watch that. Uh, and is she kind of shielding anyway because of... Yeah, we are. Yeah, she's completely isolated. Mm. So she's stuck in her one bedroom flat and uh, can't go to the shops or anything. But the weather's cooled down, so she was having a bit of a bad time with the heat. So that's a good thing for her. At least that, yeah. And I've been trying to organise, I don't know whether I... Been a while since we've met, but I've had the the group tutor group from the last from the last course we were all on. Um, we've met once, and that sort of that's grown a bit. So there's quite a there's about there's maybe ten people now, and just trying to organise that. And, everybody because they're mainly in America but there's now one person in Australia so trying to get everybody to see when they can meet and so on and that sort of tentatively moving towards a structure and a what is it that we're actually talking about um, but it's some very interesting people um, who've got a lot of experience um, in all sorts of 
areas related to mindfulness and art and literature. So it, it's intriguing to see how that will go, because nobody said a great deal yet about their own thoughts, but there's just sort of a few hints as to what people might be thinking about. But I think when that starts to open out, um, it'll be interesting. But it's, it's focused my attention a lot on the nature of um, the creative process. And what that means, and that it, I, I'm increasingly becoming the idea of it not relating to, or the, the incidentalness of outcome to the playfulness of, of creative being. And it's interesting when you were talking about your funeral, your, the, that as an experience. The, to me, that seemed like I mean, one of you, know, you were saying how enlightening and interesting and joyful. And it, it, but it also, it was maybe also, maybe because, I don't know, but it's obviously a very, very creative. It was, a, an, it was an experience which was not of, not something which is, that you would go to, um, resort and say this is I need this and then they give you it it's something that is created it's something that is something that comes from the people in, involved and that it wouldn't happen unless they were considering and thinking and wondering and that wonder makes things happen and that that happening is a joyful experience. And that, but the outcome is not, of, there is no outcome other than the experience. So I'm, it, it, I'm sort of thinking a lot now when things happen as to what the relationship of that thing that's happening, that experience has to do with playfulness and and creativity, and I and I, I'm also thinking that creativity is a, is, a, is like many words is a very poor word because creativity embodies the idea of outcome. When you think of a creative person, you think of someone who you like. You have said you you've showed us a, an outcome. You showed us that this is a picture that somebody made, but that isn't. That's just an element of the process it's not the process it's 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 just something but we categorize creativeness as we, we sort of reverse engineer things we say here is an outcome and because of this outcome we can look back and see that something's creative that produced it so we start so if we look at we think of creative people so if you think of uh, somebody like Einstein, you think, oh, it's a creative person. So you think of what they did and you think of mm -hmm. relativity. So they come up with relativity and you think, ah, because they came up with relativity, they're creative. But in fact, if relativity didn't exist, Einstein is still creative. It's the, it's the process which is the, the key thing. It's just that we identity with outcome hmm. um, so we we have art galleries and we go to the art galleries and we see paintings and we say, ah, people who painted this are creative and what that does i think is to it, it narrows the field of creativity so you you tend to think then that creativity is somehow special it's, it's, a, it's something that those people who produced outcomes are, but it's not everybody else. And I think that that's the wrong way of thinking about it. And I was rereading the, the Winnicott, um, which is the, the guy, oh, yeah. the, the 
pediatrician and psychoanalyst. And he, because he's looking at children and he's looking at play, and but all normal children play. Everybody, all children play. That's you know that's what they do. And he sees play as massive creativity. So if all children play, then all adults are creative. So why aren't they all creative? Why don't we think of them as creative? Why do we think of only a, 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 a certain section of people as creative? And that's because of the outcome. Because we we look at outcome as the, the in order you can only be creative if you have produced outcome. And therefore, if you haven't done that, you're not creative. And it, it relates back to the drawing without seeing, without looking at your picture. Because, because there is no outcome, you're free to... I never really thought of it as being creative, but actually, I think... I never thought of it as being creative because I never... I thought you're, you have to produce an outcome to see it. But I... That's why the word is wrong. That's why the word is, because when you think of the word, it means outcome as part of it. But like, if you take that away, then there's another another word to describe the uh, divergent thinking, or whatever that's going on, which isn't necessarily associated with an outcome. Anyway, that's sort of as far as I've got with my um, uh, musing on this. Uh, but it's interesting, I've, I've read the transcripts of Stephen, somebody has the transcript of Stephen's um, lecture of presentation on, on creativity and imagination, um, which was, it was interesting to read it again. And then there was another video that somebody sent that with him being interviewed about the same thing. And it's and, and the other thing that's interesting is that Stephen calls what used to be the, the, the second stage of, of um, the Eightfold Path intention, right intention, is, is what it is traditionally, and he didn't reinsert it. Um, imagination. Now, he did that because he said he looked at the word, the Pali word, that were closest to the, the Pali word that is, had been translated as intention. And, and everything that he found that was close to that was a verb. It was all to do with, with, with action, with, with doing things. Things like to build, to construct, to create, and whatever. Um, and he'd taken the idea of imagination. He decided that it was going to be imagination. A creative imagination is what he was talking about. And I was thinking, why? Why wasn't there a word for this? Why didn't the Gotama use it? And then I was reading another book about the introduction to creative psychology. And it said that there is no word creativity in most, 90% uh, of African languages don't have a word for creativity. So you think, well, does that mean African people aren't creative? Really not. So why do they not bother having a word for it? And then it, that made me think, well, perhaps it's because it's just ubiquitous. So you don't have a word for it because it's just there. It's just part of what life is. And maybe that was the same in Pali. Maybe there was no word for it, so maybe Gautama wasn't thinking about it because he just thought, well, it's, you know, it, it's so obvious, it's so in part of what we are that it's not worth um, creating a word for. But that, again, would sort of suggest to me that it's not about outcome, it's about the things that you're doing, the way you are in the world, um, or the way you can be in the world, but not necessarily are. Or the way you sort of were as a baby and a child and, and are no longer because of the way society is and the way we're speaking. And now we've categorized it because now we have art, we have art pieces, we have science, we have 
we have things which, which we can relate to, which we can see as outcomes which change the nature of the world. And those things we consider to be creative or the, or the people who made them to be creative. So we have changed the nature of this. And so that's why we've given it a word. Maybe, I don't know. It's a, it's a bit of speculation at the moment. But I, 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 it's interesting. It's, a, it's interesting to think about and then to apply it to, I'd say, other the things that occur. In, in life and so on. Which of this is to do with a creative outcome and which is to do with just being creative? If you can use the word creative. I need a new word. So if you can think of one, that would be great. Mm. Okay, all that. You, you speak about outcomes, right? Sorry, I didn't get that card. Oh, well, what you're talking about outcomes of, of creative processes, like, um, you know, certain rituals have certain outcomes, like, like you know, you know, like a like a funeral or or a, a ritual such as that. The outcome is the funeral, but then what happens after that? When people basically contemplate what happened, you know, and and sort of look back at that outcome and say, what was that? What did that mean? What does it mean now? Um, you know. Does, does the actual um, creative process stop with the outcome while people are actually contemplating that outcome? Or, is the, or does the, the creative process continue with that? Yeah, I'm, my sort of initial thought would be that it continues. It, 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 this is why it's difficult because I'm not quite sure what the word is, but it's a, when things are changing, when when you're making change, when you're instigating change, when you're, things that weren't there before are now there, and those things are not prescribed. That seems to me to be a sort of definition for creativity. So if you're contemplating something that's happened, and that contemplation is making you think differently or making you feel differently than you would have done, then that would be to me being creative because it's not being prescribed. It's not the obvious outcome. If you're, let's, let's say if you're thinking something that wouldn't be creative is um, my initial feeling when I heard my daughter in distress, that was a reactivity that was a sort of prescribed reactive that's what i would be expecting to do i'd be expected to feel annoyed upset and feel just bad in myself but recognizing it as reactivity it's then you start to think ah well that's reactive that that's not creative so what would be creative is to recognize that let it be let it go away accept it for what it is but then to respond in a different way. And it, I don't know what that different way is. And that's sort of the risk bit because I, I, I could make a mistake I could, or, or could make things worse. But you then try and think of what would be a better way for things to, to be, a better way to respond than a prescribed way. And in this case, the prescribed way would be is just to give up, give way to reactivity, to just to get internally upset and externally upset. But there is no obvious outcome to that in the way that there's no obvious outcome to a reflection other than 
feeling differently than you would have felt if you not done it, if you just responded without thinking it through or thinking about it. In the same way as in a conversation, <clears throat> you can just respond to what people say without really thinking about it, without just saying the first thing that comes into your mind. Whereas if you spend a bit of time actually thinking about what somebody said and then reflecting on it, then your response to that will be more creative because you have, um, it's not what would have otherwise have been prescribed. It's not the obvious. It's not the, what you'd get from a library book or something. It seems to me that you know, somebody the sort of, as I was saying, back to the funeral, you know, you, you go to the funeral director and say, right, somebody's died. Right, well, this is what you do. Okay. You take that and you just do it. That's not creative because it's, it's a prescribed response. Mm. I'd, I'd, I'd really, and I, love that you're exploring it like that I think it's um, uh, we have in uh, the western culture I think is, uh, well maybe all culture is still in that way Aristotelian and he he described beings as things as if nothing else existed almost like it wasn't procedures or doings it was just beings and he described those very you know what are all the the different components of for something to be and it was it's always things even if they are things like grief there there's a thing you know even if it's an idea and then the next thing with the thing is, is that judgment, then you grieve right or wrong, uh, or, you know, it's beautiful or not beautiful. Um, so, and, and our, our whole way of thinking is um, oriented towards those outcomes, as you say, things, the pieces of art, that's what we build museums for, not for artists to show us how they do it, but for the outcomes, they hang on the wall, don't they? And actually no one, it's a very big mystery how they did it. And sometimes we intrigue, but we're not really, you know, it doesn't get much, much of a look in. If you, if you compare it to the palaces we built for the outcomes, as you say, you know? Real, you know, you 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 walk me through the National Gallery. That's one impressive building, all for outcomes, not for the processes that uh, that the artists went through, but we we worship those outcomes, and it's like that when I work with the businesses or did work, you know, then they also would say the bottom line what's the outcome you know we sold that much the figure uh, and that's what the whole orientation suddenly is at even if you have spent a whole year of maybe joyfully working with others at this project and uh, you know it was very creative and um, there was an amazing experiences to be had all along what gets then kind of sanctified is the outcome, the, the, the end figure, how much of it got sold, how much got produced. The, so there's this orientation towards this going through all life, isn't it? And, and it, yes, children play, and then we start to educate them into the relevance of outcomes don't we, rather than into the relevance of process. And indeed, so much so that we don't even have a word for it anymore, because it just goes transparent. It's what happens. Uh, and we, we, the only know, way we know that it happened meaningfully is by an outcome. Otherwise, we negate it. Like nothing happened if there's nothing to show for it. It's just useless. 
and and actually and that that does remind me that I'm interested now for my Heidegger thing because he saw that to define the world by things is not really getting it. That's a, that's his whole first proposal. The things are just secondary. What is there is the world, and the world is a, is one of creativity and doing and 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 being in it in the way of of a of an engagement with it the things are just um, they they they're there too but they're really not what's important but the the world is and our our being in it the process of being and making a world so that's procedure oriented rather than outcome oriented and then he went in his later studies much more into things like art and and poetry and all that so it intrigued him i think i have to to go over that again because he might have seen that that is where art might may go wrong when it is just the piece of art which is where we lose the world. We lose the world if we stare at a piece of art without that background knowledge. And he's a big one for saying we, we lose the background because it's too transparent. It's just what happens. We only notice it when it goes wrong. So that's from the door handle breaking. Then it suddenly appears before it was not there. It was just used um, but also you know writer's block then we notice creativity only when it's not happening basically um, then we have a word for it but it, to, to describe world or creativity is a really tricky thing because it is so transparent I think he would say absolutely that and that that's so you're after it. You want to prize it out by really going away from product and any hope for product. Obviously, as soon as you make a mark on a, on a, on a paper, you will have an outcome, even if it's disjointed and you weren't ever looking at it. Um, but I, I really get that, that you want to make it clear, clearer, that it is about the, the doing of it, the making the mark rather than showing off your finished thing. Well, as I say, it, it's like a conversation. It, mm. You have a conversation. You don't, what's the, what's the product of a conversation? What's the, the, the outcome? It, it, it's ethereal. An it's, agreement. It's, there you have it again. That's in the yeah, business yeah. world. If you have a yeah. meeting that doesn't come out with an outcome, yeah, that an agreement, a plan, it's useless, <laughs> isn't it? And that's the difference between a meeting and a conversation. Uh, a conversation, our conversations don't have to have outcomes. If yeah. they do, that it's incidental. Um, but it's the, the conversation. Nice. Mm. The conversation is the important thing. The, interesting, nice. as you were talking about the word creativity. It, the word why, why? I'm assuming this, but the word play and playfulness has less credence than uh, the word creative or and creativity. If you were to say somebody is playful, an adult is playful, that you're, it's a different suggestion than that you're saying that person is a creative person. Interesting. And yet, so we've de we've de we, we, we don't expect, we expect children to be able to play. We don't expect children to play to have outcomes. Children play games that they invent. We play games that have been invented. So, and that they have outcomes. So we play tennis, 
and there is a there are rules and there are announcements for tennis, but we still play tennis or we play whatever. We play Ludo, we play mm. Monopoly. Mm. But children don't. They play, they have playtime and they play. But they don't, until later on, have structure to that play. And that play, the structure of the play, is external and creates outcomes. You know, I've scored more goals. We our team scored more goals than you. So that's an outcome of it. We've won. But when children play, they are inventing the rules as they go along. And if those rules don't suit, they just change them. And if something else happens, you know, well, we'll, we'll, we'll incorporate that. Somebody else comes to play the game. Right, well, <laughs> we have to change. But we will incorporate it. We will, that's life. And that changes. And that, to me, is much more creative, actually, than being what we would think of being creative. Because we, when we think of being creative, we're well, going to paint a picture, right? Well, there are lots of rules because of the medium I'm using, the canvas. What what I then either set the rules by saying, that's the world out there and I'm going to represent it on this, or I'm going to represent my thoughts on the world. So I'm creating rules, which I've stick to in order to produce an output. So that's how we've categorized creativity. But if we don't have an outcome at all, like in play when kids are three-year-old, four-year-old playing, then that, to me, is what I'm trying to get at in terms of that, the, that playfulness is that creativity and that's accommodating things that happen in the world. So whatever happens, I can accommodate it. Um, but I'm not but I'm not thinking of of an outcome. I'm just accommodating things that happen. I'm just responding to the world. So creativity yeah, yeah. is quite a, a loaded word, actually. It is. Yeah. It yeah. <clears throat> it comes from its background of thinginess, in in the way that creativity leads to creations, um, and outcome. So it is not a good word, actually, for describing what you're after, because immediately, no. if someone is creative, we want to see the outcome, don't we? Uh, it's very linked to it. It's uh, that it comes as a as a, a two sum, perhaps. Whereas playfulness ha it has a little bit of a looser affair going on there. Playfulness doesn't have in in fact actually I do, you know I think it's the better word here because <clears throat> playfulness. Has has often an ex, um, uh, the opposite, almost as a negative. Oh, playfulness doesn't lead to anywhere, which is a good thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I think that, yeah. So that it's negativity mm -hmm. in in common language hints that it actually is the better word for what you're describing. It 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 is, and I. Because of its connotations with children, again, I think it's useful. Mm. Yeah. Because it breaks that link. We don't offer adults. We don't, you can describe people as creative. You don't often describe them as playful. I think. I can't remember the last time I thought somebody was being playful. And if you're creative, I, I can can I just read you that? This is what I found in Sam's workshop. It's it's um so it it was uh, it it's 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 quite a a big card, you know, but more than a four card, uh, printed out. This was in a very visible place in in her workshop. The decision to run a workshop includes the inevitable nightmares of selling one's work 
hearts, souls, and abilities are openly exposed. Who is to say one is good enough? How to find an outlet? Who is going to buy? Is there enough to sell? What happens if nothing sells? How to start? And this is a quote from a Susan Bosons, Handblock, hand block Printing and Resist Dying book. And it broke my heart. <clears throat> kind of, that's where creativity leads us to just, you know, the whole disaster in a way, the whole failure of creativity. You know, so you, you engage with it. Uh, there is even an outcome, amazing, you know, you were so determined that you manifested something. And then the judgment that even are created in one's own head, because I don't think every anyone who would look at her stuff, did, you know, would say, that's fantastic. But she, clearly, this spoke to her. And, and this, this is the dilemma of a maker. Uh, the harsh judgments flood in that that egoic being floods in with its reactivity and and destroys it you know just makes a total misery of it it's just and it's exactly what you're talking about is that that is when creativity hinting at a product goes badly badly wrong for us yeah, I, 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 well, that, that's it, sort of the way that children carry on, Gary. There, the, the the way the way that children play, um, and I do know a bit about this. Um, I've played with a few. Um, it, it's it's. There are outcomes, but those are not stopping points. The jumping off points to, 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 the, to the next outcome or, or happening. You know, it's a movement, like, you know, know play, playing uh, with your son with playing cars. You know, they'll sort of be driving all around about, you know, what's going on and be going on in their head, you know, and they'll do something, turn around or, you know, do anything with the car and it, and it becomes an outcome and then they move on to an outcome to sort of you know but that, that there's still a, a, a red team uh, but every every now and again the jet the game will change there'll be sort of mutations thrown in, or daddy will do something stupid and mess it all up which will sort of start another stage of the game which will sort of you know branch off into another direction um you know you know one of, one of one thing I, I do like to do is to sort of you know play along with with children's um, games you know for a while maybe even days and then disrupt it by doing something unexpected and just seeing what they do. Uh, so yeah, I, I like to run to my kids, <laughs> see what what happens. And just just simple little games that they're just playing in their imaginations, and you're just you're pushing around the car, they're pushing around the car. God knows what he's thinking. I've got no idea. Uh, but, but you've got to follow the rules of, of the game that's being actually established. And there's, you know, these things are completely dynamic, but they do have a, there is, there is patterns some, sometimes form. But yeah, but the outcome, there are outcomes, but they're not static outcomes. They're just waypoints. Yeah, yeah I, I, I think exactly. And I, I, and I wouldn't call them outcomes. I would, waypoints is, is nice. Because an outcome is a is an end point. You, know, you, you do something, and you, you make you you bake the cake, and you produce the cake. An outcome, I mean, but but actually, you eat the cake and uh, you digest it. I mean. So I, I, again, it's it's just wo it's words, and that's the problem we always have with words is that once you you've got the word there, then you have a meaning, and the meaning becomes more important than the thing you were trying to describe in the first place. Um, so mm -hmm. it goes back to the Heideggerian experience. And 
And I, I just, I just wonder about this as a how. I mean, we talk about explaining it, but actually, it's the experience of it. So that's why I'm trying to think now of, of when I do things or hear other people do things, and then wonder how much of that is is creative, the or the playful, let's say, try to use that word, rather than the predict the prediction, the the predicting of well, this is what. I would normally do, or this is what I get from a, a library. I go to the library and I find out how to do something. I go to go to the instruction book and I find out how to do something. Rather than that, I do it more playfully, more more process led without thinking too much about the outcome, but, or outcome, or what's going to happen at the end. But on the other hand, you do you always think about, what well, we do as adults, always thinking about, pretty much always thinking about what's going to, what's going to be there. It's, all, it's, a, it's an intriguing sort of dynamic. I thought it was a good word as well. But, you know, but, but, um, Anyway, it's, it's, it's uh, interesting stuff, I, I, I find. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see if there's any of that that comes through from the, the group, this uh, study group. And uh, uh, well, we're meeting next Saturday. And next Sunday, I start my sailing training. What? Yeah. <laughs> You're going to be a sailor? I've well, signed well, up, God. <laughs> I've signed up for the St. Leonard's and Hastings Sailing Club. And um, we had a, my had an induction last Wednesday, two days ago. And then I do four days training to get my level two um, qualification so I can go and use the club boat and go sailing on the sea. Yay! <laughs> They'll be all be sailors. How amazing. <laughs> cool. <laughs> I finally entered the, the group of, uh, of, of sailors. <laughs> finally one of us. <laughs> well, not God, yet. have no, we not worked yet. hard on that? <laughs> well, I had to move somewhere where there was some potential for my playful activity on the, on the sea. Anyway, we'll see. Hmm. It's very playful sailing, I think. Yeah. It's good well, play, playfulness. Yeah. You really don't, but but it, uh, you know, in the in hmm. playfulness, it's not without its own structure, isn't it? Because you're still hmm. uh, dealing with the givens of nature. I was thinking, so it. Yeah. And, you are, and this, and yet, exactly. Unless you're, it's a, an if interaction. You're not racing, yeah, you don't have an outcome. There's yeah. No, the outcome is the experience. Yeah. Presumably, you know, it's a type of sail. Yeah. Well, that's why you don't know a lot, a lot about sailing. I mean, <laughs> the thing is, whenever you go, it's always a race. Okay, <laughs> this is rule number one. It's always a race. No matter what anybody says, what, what, they say, oh, I'm not racing, I'm just hanging back here. Just, no, it's always a race. <laughs> a, a well, race against what? <laughs> what? Uh, is it a what what a race against what a race against against whoever else is out in the water but if there is no one else then if you've got <laughs> sorry if you're out in the sea on your own in a boat who are you racing against Well, yeah, that's different. But if another boat turns up, <laughs> then it's a race. <laughs> and in between well, other boats, it's just boring. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> oh. You can well, see, we'll see how how this 
how um, you know culturally we are we are just so um, oriented towards towards it, aren't we? Towards race, racing, you know, competing. Um, this this judgmental habit has really taken a, a terrible. It's terrible because um, it 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 wants to sneak into everything, indeed, and um, then you can't even does, be on the water anymore with with just being with you and the elements and the sea and the dolphin. It has to be a race. I, I agree. But that's part of the excitement. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that's well, like a sort of a, a, a prick of reactivity, sort of <laughs> just it sort of tests you and just sort of yeah. You know, I mean, obviously, that... some people take it way too, you know, but uh, I mean, just a, in a sort of normal everyday thing, I mean, you know, wanting to sort of compete against the boat or just see how your boat's going against another type of boat or you know, wanting want to sort of get a one up on some guy you know in, in the yacht club or you know, just all things. That, that you know, sort of instantly, sort of seem to kick in whenever you see two boats on the water. So. Mm -hmm. but, you know, I don't see it, see it as completely negative, but but certainly it has it does it can lead to some negative places. Well, it, it, you know, as outcomes and races seem to be unavoidable. I think we we just you know, it's a funny word, but it's. Um, we have to then, as a as a kind of a tipping point, where it goes from something that's static and detrimental into something that is actually dynamic, stays dynamic and is useful. Uh, that we call any outcome interesting rather than good or bad. It's always yeah, yeah. interesting. So the product is interesting. Uh, rather than oh that's a good painting bad painting it's just oh look what they did there that's interesting um, and the same with um, it, it's truly a, a, a very good way of learning how to make a, a sale be efficient by racing because you notice that they over there just going and I just sit here that is a, a good indication that I might not have trimmed my sails the right way. So comparison even mm -hmm. can be an interest, but mm -hmm. comparison may be again, a more interesting way of looking at it than racing. But it, it, it is uh, more veer mm -hmm. towards the interesting rather than the winning or losing, if you say comparison. Um, mm -hmm. There is a few. There are on the BBC iPlayer at the moment. There is. Um, there are a few archive uh, footages of artists at work. You know, as they kind of splash on their oil paints on huge canvases and all that. The artists I don't know very well. Um, I thought that was an an interesting thing that obviously these were made in the 60s and 70s and clearly there was an interesting and 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 documenting the process of making a piece of art rather than like now you can get the documentaries about the pieces of art so there's much more common nowadays to just um um, yeah, to, to someone wandering through a gallery or museum and pointing out this or that, and then you get a few, uh, a, a few informations about when that was done and, and where, where the artists lived or something like that. But then there, was, there must have been a, a, a movement of just really documenting as they were going. And they weren't, they weren't terribly efficient. You know, they, they, they just often painted over the same thing three times anyway, because they weren't, they, you know, they, they, that didn't please them. So they redid it. So 
you could say that's pretty pointless. You just showed me how to do something that you then destroyed again. But actually, it was much, much closer to the heart of creativity or playfulness than what we get nowadays. So, and they would often, I noticed how often these artists that were inviting the cameras into their process, which is quite a brave thing to do, I guess, uh, how often they were saying interesting rather than anything else in when they described what they were doing or what they when they stepped back and say what's just happened here they very often were clever enough to say interesting rather mm. than good bad whatever good, good bad yes well, good, bad. it's not it's not good or bad i mean I, and the, and the, there was there was, a, there was a couple of things that you were saying about the sale and getting and the, and when it's right when it works and that there's a beauty in that there's an elegance there's a, a it's just it's all it's all happening correctly it's all it's going as beautifully as it can and i and it's it's a good i think it's interesting we can use beauty in that way and as well as in a in a we can use it for an experience as well as a a thing, an item, you can say, with a beautiful painting. So it's an experience, and I, but again, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's not, a, it's not an ideal word, but it, I think beauty is, is, is useful as a word because it's difficult to describe what is beautiful. Hmm. But it's something that you know, but you can't, you couldn't write down. You could say this is what is required in order to be beautiful. And the other thing is that the nature of the, you mentioned earlier about the ego and the ego getting in the way. And there's another way of thinking about the ego. And that is to say who, who produces the outcome? Because one other thing that I was, I was, I was, when I was writing about this, um, these, these ideas, I said, um, oh, and then something occurred, and I, I wrote down something occurred to me, and then I, I took off the last two words, because something occurred, but yeah. it wasn't me, I, mm. I didn't make them occur, mm. I, 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 I can sit down and, and do some math, and I could work out, and I, and I could say, well, I did that, I made that, because I concentrated hard and I followed the rules and I got to this. But if it was an idea, then I didn't do it because the idea occurred. I, it wasn't there and I couldn't go to a book. I couldn't go to my library and get it. It, it didn't exist. And that, that's the part of the playfulness is that there's, there's no, there can't be an ego in playfulness. And you, because there's no outcome <clears throat> in playfulness, you can't say you did it, who did it, it just did. The play happened. These children were playing. They didn't invent the playfulness. They they were playing. But with creativity, somebody did the outcome. And yet, if it's playful, they didn't. Because the, it just happened. It happened because of the circumstances that they set up. But they didn't know when they were painting. The painting weren't painting. But they didn't make that happen. It happened through the, that person, but it wasn't the individual in the way that we would think of an individual making something. It make something. If I make a greenhouse and I follow a set of instructions, I build it, follow the instructions, build. right, I, I did that. I followed those instructions and I did that. But if that thing didn't exist, but now something exists. But, and there was no instructions for it, then I can't say I did it. I can say there was no individual. It just, it was, it was, it, things happened. There it is. And yet we don't do that. We always say 
you somebody wrote the book. There's the author of the book. I wrote the book. Mm-hmm. They painted the picture, put the stuff, they stuff, find it. That that is up to in order to make that an authentic Caravaggio, we we look at it and we say, yeah, Caravaggio definitely painted right now it's value. That's what's paying off. Um, that has no value. Mm. This is this is the one we're gonna end on. This one we know because it was Caravaggio and therefore if it was that person, and that was the important thing that it was painted by that person. Not what the painting is. <clears throat> well, that, that means course, that the, the value is in the provenance. Uh, it, it, the, the value we, we, we put on paintings is different nowadays, it's absolutely. Yeah, it's, uh, it's really weird what we do now with art. I mean, that's mm-hmm. just so strange how we. I mean, it used to be in, well, in, 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 in the also... It also uh, acts as, uh, you, know, um, you know, the art, the whole art industry seems to, to, to thrive on the rendering. It has to cut to the poor, um, you know, fairly, you know, pedestrian pieces of art uh, just because it has a name, you know, used by by organized cults and, and, and very rich people to avoid tax. Um, these, this, the whole art industry is, is structured around that. I'm talking about the, the, the super high end, uh, the ridiculous end. It's, 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 you know, the value is just completely arbitrary and uh, yeah, artificial. We're still mesmerized by mm. things, things, mm. yeah. Rather mm. than anyway, I'll let I'll let you know how it goes with my yeah, uh, please meeting. But you can if... join in, you know. You are allowed. You know, if you want. But... Well, I, it sounded like you you felt it were too it was too big already. Uh, well, the first one there were seven people, which is sort of manageable. Now there's two more. Mm. Um, but then maybe they may not all turn up. So, you know, we'll see. I, but, um, I, I don't know. I mean, it, it, you know, you think, well, if we've settled on a 75 minutes, I think. And, and so that sort of five minutes per person, they're going to, they're going to say something. Um, so, but what we've got, which is interesting, is that um, Shannon from um, Bodhi College has said, They've set up individual forums now for these study groups that have evolved, I think, because we suggested there ought to be a follow-up. Mm. Mm. Um, and they're now going to run them on the Bodhi College. So Bodhi College forum for the for our course is finished and we'll finish it and then did July shut down. But they're going to keep open these forums for the study group, but they are going to be closed to those people in the study group. So initially, at any rate, I don't know because it's open to discussion, but it means that there'll be a way of um, conversing um, without meeting, you know, without, so we can, that, and I think that's going to be much more useful so that they, we can then start to produce this is like talk about Python, let's talk about apps or whatever people are going to come up with. So we could start to post things in those forums and have discussions there, but a chance to read and think and respond. And then maybe in a, the following meeting, that can come up. And maybe then it will start to go into subcategories. You know, and then you get a meeting about that bit, which not everybody wants to go to. I don't know, but I think the forum will be very useful because at the moment we just have to send emails to the a nightmare to try and mm. organize thoughts on an email. So I'm, that, that would be good. So we can open, I can certainly invite you to those. Could you? Yeah, please. Course, if yeah. you don't think that it is too much, and I'd love to be invited. So we'll see. We'll um, um, uh, see how it goes next Saturday. And then, uh, 
and because Shannon is coming to that meeting and uh, she'll talk about how she envisages the form if she has my idea about how this form is going to kind of work. But I thought it was quite good because they're going to monitor it and they're going to be moderating it all. I really think a moderator is required. But um, so it, it's Bodie College, which is sending their um, largesse. So, and that's Saturday a week, is it? Uh, where are we? Yeah, we, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, Friday. So, not tomorrow, week, week, week tomorrow. Mm. Um, uh, yeah, and then because that's right, because then the Sunday I go on my, uh, my sailing. <laughs> you are a course te leader already. Mm -hmm. you, you've, done, you've done very well. Yes, Rupert you know course way, leader. <laughs> you know the way it's spelled. You know this. <laughs> what? Okay. Now, have you noticed the way it's spelled? It is not spelled. It's spelled as in course, like course fishing. It's yeah. Not, yeah. Well, that was the present presence when I became course leader at the um, university. <laughs> from my yeah, but in the sailing word, it means something. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, quite. Fourth personality. Yes. <laughs> hey, well, and if it is... That, hmm? The fact that I was dyslexic meant that I, I was... Yeah, it's very good, yeah. <laughs> um, well, if it feels um, if it feels appropriate, that'd be amazing to to look in on this inaugural meeting to see how that works. But you know, see what what feels all right and all. But anyway, that would be amazing. Right. Mm. Well, I'll I'll do that. I'll send you. Uh, I'll ask you to be included on the email. This, but you're what's happening is people are introducing themselves on the email. So you just, everybody's written a little paragraph about where they, who they are, where they are in the world, um, mm -hmm. uh, just as a, an introduction, so that we don't have to do that in the meeting. You know. So, um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Lovely to catch well, I may up do that, or I may you. wait until after the Saturday because I've got depends on yeah, the yeah. time I've got to do. Yeah, yeah. But it's been lovely to see you both, and I hope everything's yeah. worked out for you, Gary. And I hope your so energy hope levels that. pick up again. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I hope that it all goes goes all yeah. right for you, Gary. Yeah. That's very complex. Yeah. Hmm. So we're not in a prison cell next time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, it looks like you're it wouldn't make much difference, actually. <laughs> I was say, it's, like, yeah, well, yeah. it's the same color there, I tell you. <laughs> okay. 